Okay. We'll get we'll give everyone a few more yep. minutes to jump, jump on. on. We got people popping in here as we yes, are getting we ready do. this morning. Good morning, everybody. Yeah, they are. There's my friend Alice. Hi, Alice. <laughs> oh, because she she's got the whole. I was like, I only see a little bar. That's fine. Yeah. All right. Let's see here. Almost 50. Good morning, everyone. Everyone has their coffee ready to go. I do. I do. <laughs> <laughs> Coffee with Scott and Alyssa at Club. <laughs> hey, Vanita, how you doing? Look at Sally with her grandchildren. Oh, we got some young ones. Oh, that's hey there. great. <laughs> Aww. Oh, how cute. Oh, fun to see everybody. Now this is how New York does it. <laughs> <laughs> Through cameras. All right. Well, why don't we get going here? Um, welcome everyone to our March Serger Club with Pam Mashey. Now, Pam, you all, most of you all know we've uh, had Pam in uh, multiple times, and of course, Pam was in before we were in, so, <laughs> so um, welcome back, Pam. Glad to be here. It's always great to come back, whether we're virtual or in person. Yes, and we greatly appreciate you um, going out of your way to join us today. So uh, we know you have a very busy schedule. Uh, Pam is now with Bernina. She is the overlocker business manager for Bernina. It's been about a year now, correct? Yeah, yep. Yeah, March 1st, I started. Yeah, so time's flying. And uh, Pam has rolled out this, one of these brand new L series overlockers or sergers. So she's gonna be working on the L890 today, going through uh, this perfect tote bag that will be talking through. Um, now the L890, we, well, I'm going to toot all of Aurora Sewing Center's horn. Say. Of course, with Pam. Go ahead, go ahead and toot. You can't, I mean, no, not toot, but. <laughs> Shout out about the store. <laughs> well, we, we have a great team here. And um, even before our arrival, our mother and Jim had gotten pulled into a product development project under, you know, contract secret terms with Bernina. And it was at the beginning evolution of creating the new overlocker series, the eight series here. And then as time went and development continued, um, Jim actually was brought over to Switzerland to work with Bernina. And then when the beta machines were brought into um, the United States here, uh, we had an opportunity to work through and, and get to play on the L890 and, and continue its final stages of development. So we, um, we really enjoy this machine. We're glad to uh, that Bernina has rolled it out in the past year unfortunately it was kind of, it was in the middle of this pandemic so i think we'll see its use only drastically grow here over the next uh year or so as um you know we all get back on our feet and back to a, a normal way of living again um but yeah uh, roar swing center had a role and we're really glad that uh Anne is still with us and um working very hard here with bernina to um work on the new technology and roll it out across the North America. So thank you, Pam. And of course, thanks to Aurora Sewing Center for yep. having us in this position to um, partake in these type of things. And of course, you know, I, I think some of you we've told that we were part of that 
um, but you know, we have to sign in blood that we can't talk about new product development if we have the opportunity to play and, and work with a company such as Bernina on those type of things. So we're very, uh, we'll very signed. proud to be part of that. But of course, as you can imagine, um, we can't talk about it until no. now. <laughs> And, and, you know, we, we certainly ask dealers like Aurora Sewing Center, who have a, a great background in being able to work with you and listen to your you, you as their customers and help us develop products that are going to brought into the market that will help you as sewists and using your machines in a much easier, better way. So we always look to uh, Aurora Sewing Center and other dealerships that have great affiliation with their customers as well to help develop the products. Yes. So thanks for doing that for us. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, thanks to everyone. That's right. Okay, so um, why don't we kick over to <laughs> our PowerPoint uh, just to cover what's coming up over the next few weeks and, and then we'll get on to our surgeon chair and then get back over to Pam. All right. So thanks again, Pam, for um, carving out time to join us from uh, far away, virtually. Yes. And what I'm going to do while you're going through the PowerPoint real quick, since I am going to start in a different spot, I'm going to turn off my camera so we're not moving all around while you're talking on your PowerPoint. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. So uh, virtual events and programs, I'm going to start off with, um, we have the, I think this is Thursday, no, Friday, Friday. Um, the last of a long series of AccuQuilt programs. This is Mastering Your Go Cube. This is probably the most advanced um, lecture program or class that AccuQuilt currently has. So if you have an AccuQuilt cutter and you already have the cube, this is going to maximize the value of those cubes and show you what you can do with these tools and how you can um, you know, be extra creative um, and, and talk through the grid method as well, which kind of brings everything together as it relates to use of the cube. If you don't have an AccuQuilt cutter, this is a more complex class. You're free to join in. It is a free class. I, I would just encourage you to maybe uh, be aware that this is a complex, um, more complex program with AccuQuilt. So if you get lost, don't sweat it. It'll be a, a good introduction to the cube, but you may want to kind of temper your expectations if you're not familiar with AccuQuilt at this point. Okay. That is not a recorded class, which I, I do emphasize that. So that is, you have to jump on and watch it when it's happening. Thank you. Mm -hmm. It is free, uh, but you do have to register if you want to join it. Okay, um, now this weekend, Saturday, nine to three, we are doing an OESD virtual embroidery event. <laughs> it starts at 9 a.m. We have four kits available, but you have to um, come into the store and pick them up. Currently they're at the Williamsville store. Um, so if you are interested in joining in, please give a call or stop in to, to snag one. Once they're gone, we're, we're out. We, the way OESD worked this is it was a direct shipment you ordered online, we said, some people just can't plan that far in advance. Give us four and we'll try to accommodate the best we can for um, you know, the last four individuals that want to jump in. There is space available. Uh, you'll be making three projects. Um, Those are the three projects, tea towel, yep, a go. little um, lunier, and then an apron, which you actually embroider the pockets and then put the pockets on the apron. Uh, we do not have a thread kit here at the store. At the store, we have plenty of thread. Um, those thread colors, I think we have most of them in stock. So you can make your own kit here at the store. To, yeah, that uh, was a special. Yeah. That was a special thing from OESD. 
Let but we do know the colors, so we can mm -hmm. uh, work with you to try to get you the right colors for the, the program as OESD dictates mm -hmm. the colors. Good question. All right. So um, four kits, first four people can join us on that. Just call the store. Yep. Um, Wednesday, next Wednesday, 10 to noon, we have Rhonda Pierce with Schmetz doing a free class. Um, this will be about an hour or so of education and then question answers after. Uh, Rhonda, uh, we've had the luxury of going to some different conferences and sitting in on her programs. And of course, as a newbie a few years back, um, greener than green, I was like, what am I gonna learn about needles? And boy, I was blown away. Um, you know, you think about your machine and it doesn't matter the, the type of machine, what you're sewing, that needle is moving very fast and seeing all your fabric, every little <laughs> fiber is, you know, is being seen by that needle. And um, often, you know, I know when we've had serger skipping stitches or other problems, sometimes it can be as simple as your needle yeah. is a problem or, you know, we're trying to save a, a few dollars and stretch the length of our needles. Well, it, it can really mess you up. So um, not to mention there's a million colors and a million sizes on these needles. Um, great class to sit in. I encourage everyone to sign up. It's free. It's an hour long. It is recorded. So if you don't want to join us at 10 a.m. on Wednesday, but you want to watch it Thursday evening, you can do it. You can do that off your couch. So, yep, that, that's available. You can call the store to sign up or right on, on our web. Okay, uh, we had the sewing club earlier Two weeks ago. Uh, this month with Diane, the Cozy Nest program with uh, the different bags and using the seatbelt material. Diane has a follow up class on the wristlet. Uh, so, if you got that kit, you can join in. If you didn't get that kit, well, if you call today, you probably can order one through us um, uh, Friday, April 2nd and the 9th in the morning. So um, that'll be a nice class. And I know um, some of you that bought the kits, if you haven't tried yet, um, this is a little bit more difficult. Diane, you know, said, yeah. hey, I, I want to teach a class on this because there are some nuances to, uh, mm -hmm. to using the seatbelt material or seatbelts. To, to make these these bags. So, all right. Um, let's see. Then we got the uh, scrappy courthouse steps log cabin pillow that Eileen's teaching <laughs> Friday night, August second and the no, 9th. April, not oh. August second. But thank you for. <laughs> hey, well, moving forward here, <clears throat> April second and 9th. So, um, so if you want to join in uh, with Eileen, um, this will be. Uh, next Friday, right? I think, yeah, we're yeah. already into wow. April. Wow. It's next Friday. So these, these classes are coming up. And then we got, <laughs> it's time for the beach, ladies. <laughs> <laughs> this program is uh, the, the next two Wednesday evenings. So not tonight, but next yes. Wednesday and then April 4th. This is with Nikki. And this is an applique, correct? Yep, this is, yes, it is. And I will speak of this. This is not a beginner's applique class. That's what Nikki said. She's like, it's, you know. Is it because it's R-rated or? Uh, yeah, that's right, because I see her <laughs> cheeks. <laughs> so no, but she's, she said it's a lot of fun, but it is a little tedious, so it's not for a newbie. Yes, and there is a pattern needed for this mm -hmm. with um, yep, we have all the design. Yep, we have them in stock. Um, but yeah, this is a little bit more complex and of course, I think we all would agree we're ready for the beach. So <laughs> I'm not saying anything right no. now. I'm keeping my mouth shut. <laughs> all right. Okay. And then, oh, oh. we did it again. Yeah. That's not a computer. All right. So if we could go, sorry, ladies. We, we are not sure why this happens. We've tried four or five different things and it uh, gets crazy on us. And that's not stuck. Mm. Okay, no, we've, we've, button would be stuck. we've tried that. We're trying right. to make everyone dizzy and, and stay We're very We're making focused. sure you're all paying attention. We would just skip to the bottom. Oh, no. Okay. All right. We'll give you a minute to catch up with us here. 
So we have um, Summer Nights event. It's a one day program with Sheila and Alyssa. And that's in May. I can't see the date. <laughs> with the way we're positioned with our camera. So Saturday, May 22nd from nine to three, it is virtual, it's 115, it includes a kit and we include the stabilizer that you will need for your project. Um, there's, there's, there's three projects. Three projects right? um, so I'm gonna try the little mug rug that's on the bottom there, the tote, and then the little can, I, I'm gonna call it like a little candy roll up holder. Um, those are the projects. Uh, you join us, we have fun, we monkey around like always. We eat, go to you, but you're in your house, but it is virtual um, and we have a few spots open, so give us a call. And then we have uh, a three-day embroidery workshop with Claudia Danielle from Claudia's Creations. This is a more complex program. Uh, Claudia has been with us a few years back as part of Embroidery Club. We wanted to bring her back, um, but because of the restrictions, we went virtual. And um, we're so happy that we could do this with her. It's, again, three days, uh, $369 for the program, and it includes the designs. And you get to choose... Out of, I believe it's just over 40 designs to create your own custom slash unique sewing room uh, embroidered quilt. So um, pretty cool. This is a brand new program. And um, yeah, this this will be uh, a lot of fun. And Claudia is great. You're going to learn, you know, her hooping style of multiple hoopings. And she's just a lot of fun and full of information and, and of course, experience. So um, if you haven't signed up and been thinking about this, I encourage you because it is limited space in this because um, it's virtual. It'll be um, a bit more challenging because of the complexity. And um, at the minimum hoop size, eight inch by 12 inch. So, you know, this is for those that um, have a bit you know, a bigger machine and, and capability with the machine. One of our customers just said uh, she did it in January and it's absolutely oh. fabulous. Yeah, it, 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 yeah. yeah, great, great. Yeah, we've heard fabulous things from other dealers on this program mm -hmm. as well. So um, as expected, I mean, Claudia, is, Claudia was wonderful when she was here. Okay, um, let's see, surgeon share, let's do it. I'm looking for the Yeah, product. same here. <laughs> I was like, where is it? Oh, it's on the TV. All right, so I'm sorry, I have to stand. <laughs> Camera's in the way. So we have Beth Griffiths. She did a zipper bag quilted and constructed completely on the serger. The fabric is black denim. Is it really? I'm sorry. Which she had, she, you know, you guys had a little bit of a stash. She used the chain stitch using the 12 weight oh. Wonderfill variegated fruity thread. That's cool. And then um, bought at least two, she bought that two years ago at our store. So look at how cool. And I, again, I still wish you guys were up close and I could really look at it in my hands. Great job, Beth. That, that wow. 12 weight thread looks phenomenal. Phenomenal. With the variegation. That yeah. actually looks more like um, the fabric. Like you yeah, you wouldn't yeah. think it's the thread doing with the chain stitch. Great, that is awesome. Um, can, I can yeah. try and read it, I just can't yeah. see the picture. Uh, Kathy Myers, she made this apron, <laughs> which I thought this was a great idea. She made it on um, take, she, I'm not good at the chain stitching, but she did it. And the good job. She made that apron to cover her clothes while she's working because she must, I don't know what you do, Kathy, I'm sorry, but she's cleaning with bleach and she doesn't want to wreck her clothes, which happens every time when you're cleaning with bleach. Yeah. So she's covering herself up. Good job. Perfect. All right, Ann Flanders made a tic-tac-toe game for almost a two-year-old great-granddaughter. Wow. And you're not old enough to have a great granddaughter. Um, she put the pictures cut from the scraps so she could try to get them instead of playing the actual thing. <laughs> awesome. I love that. Um, all right, hold on. I'm so, I like really have to get close. We're going to have to get you some glasses. No, it's writing small. Oh. All right, Diane Fitch. <laughs> um, she made the flying geese section a couple years ago on the sewing machine, and she finally put it together using her serger. She said it's so much faster and neater seam edges. And that is true. 
first time doing flying geese. Not at all of them are perfect for sure, but I learned a lot doing them. And that great job. Great man. job. Awesome. Excuse me. Anna Wilson. She um, did her uh, borders with a four thread overlock about a, a one week of surging quilt. So she is taking the Lori Hernandez um, serger. Creative perverted, techniques. Thank you. Quilt 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 serger class yes. that we're hosting. And the, the well, my right side are all of her pieces that she's using, she did for all of her techniques. And now she's applying those techniques to her projects, which is exactly what we wanted everybody to do. That is great, yeah, these, great that, job. We've had so much positive feedback and, and I've enjoyed um, certainly working through with some of the programs with mm -hmm. Lori. Uh, I did not dive into the quilt, but mm -hmm. uh, did a lot of the techniques. Um, but I, we're watching all of their process, yeah. progress. I mean, yeah, we are. Awesome. I know we're not always commenting or engaging, but you guys are doing a great, great job. Great feedback from everyone, and uh, certainly a shout out to Lori. Absolutely. Um, Mary Shinners, <laughs> not sure if this counts, but no time to complete a project. Absolutely it counts. She is also taking the Lori Hernandez program, and those are her samples, and I think because I'm short, I think the first picture on your left is part of her quilt. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. And and Mary, <laughs> trying to no look. worries. I mean, I think uh, for Embroidery Club, you you had like three or four projects. Yeah, you're good. It, so you're, you're, you're covered. Good. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's cool. Suzanne Shank finished wow. this dress for my granddaughter using the pattern which she planned on using to make her communion dress. Aw. The floral fabric used from the bodice is from our store. She used both her Bernina 590 and her baby lock ovation. So she assembled that whole dress um, with her sewing machine and her surgery. Great job. Yeah, That's beautiful. beautiful. Oh, I know that fabric. I just realized what fabric. That's the um, digital floral. Beautiful. Hmm. Okay, Sharon Berman. Oh. She did a few blocks from the surgery technique class. She especially liked the look of the blue glamour 12-weight um, thread, which I, again, the camera's in my way, so I wish I could see it. I'm okay. sorry. Yeah, we had gotten some glamour in. That's you know, right. She so used it. Great. Oh, great. great. Yeah. Good job. Look at that ruffling on that top one. That's the one I can see, the yellow. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then Jan Edwards is also taking the surgery technique quilt class. She is saying she's learning so much, and that is what everybody is saying, and that is some of her blocks. Love it. Looking and I good. know those fabrics. Yeah, I do. Good job, Jan. All right. So. All right. Should. Uh, yeah. I'll go we'll, over today, and then. Yeah, we'll, we'll go over this. today. Okay, and then we'll we do come to the time. raffle. I know. Um. Well, we're just wanting everyone. You know, it's so much easier when we're face to face. Right I know. Now. I know. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So, um, just real quick with the club options, you certainly can order things online, but I think the the cornerstone of today's. Uh, program with Pam is the kit that uh, Pam and Alyssa have put together. Mm -hmm. And the kit has to be uh, ordered over the phone. With all the capabilities of uh, our technology as it stands today. So if you want the kit, call or um, come into the store. If you're just uh, after other smaller, you know, the notions, the threads, what have you, you can, can order those items uh, or the pattern itself. You can order that over the web if you choose not to call or come in and you just need to use the discount code tote bag 15. Okay. Now the, the next item here. Oh, and here is a picture of that is the, the, kit. the kit and project that or that, that Pam's put together working with Alyssa. Mm -hmm. Isn't that awesome? Now you, you may have seen some of this before, but <laughs> I'll let Alyssa and Pam speak to that. Yeah. So you want me to speak now? Sure. sure. So um, we got a little excited about ordering our t-shirts. A while back. Yeah. <laughs> a while back. And Pam said, do you have this? And I, we were digging and thinking. And I said, what about the shirts that might fit our daughter's for one more month and that's about it because they, they were very, very small. We, we didn't have a shirt to look at when we bought it and we thought we were buying the right sizes. So I and Scott and Pam came up and said, let's take these shirts and use them. So I found the fabrics 
we grouped up our shirt and the fabrics to match our store and our t-shirts and Pam created this bag um, using that product. So that's what the kit is. It's one of our t-shirts that she'll tell you how to cut it. And then um, you've got some grunge fabric, a lining, and then some Essex linen to create that tote bag, which Pam will show you today and uh, talk to you of it. And that's what the kit is. Um, the bonus is, which I realized after, you could use both sides of our shirts. <laughs> so one side could be our store and the other side can be um, happiness is a full bobbin. So you could actually do both side panels of both sides of the shirts and use that shirt for that. Um, if you guys don't wanna use the shirt and you wanna try and get yourself in it, you can do that too. Um, but I know they didn't even fit me, so. <laughs> Well, and I, I'm afraid it wouldn't fit on my left arm, and not, and not that it's uh, muscular anymore, but, <laughs> no. but they're getting pretty small, and, we're, and also when you wash them, they're a little smaller. My bobbin <laughs> was stretched, <laughs> even fuller. Can you unmute Pam, Sydney? Mm -hmm. Hold on, Pam, we're unmuting you. Yeah, so it was uh, definitely had to, so Pam, now, I'm, there you go. Okay, are we there? Okay. Yeah, you had a full bobbin. Uh, yeah, it was it was not it was snug. <laughs> so that that is the kit today, and Pam will talk more of it. Um, I have once we turn the cameras off of the PowerPoint, we have I have the stuff out behind us to show you all the product that will be in your kit. Okay, so the the club kit special is the kit that will be talk, spoken of in a bit more detail here as we go, plus the pattern and um, it, a total of $48.99, even with the kit and all the materials, uh, plus the pattern, it normally be $66. So um, thankfully we have all these extra t-shirts that mm -hmm. probably only fit Sally's grandkids at this point. <laughs> 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 so, um, yeah, we thought maybe take advantage of this. And you know what? If you know someone that can use a t-shirt, go for yeah, it. Go for you, it. you can change up your kit as you wish. You know, so. Okay, in addition, wow. thanks to Pam, Bernina. This is great. This this OESD event we're doing, boy, we were able to pull together a really nice package here um, for the L890 machine. If you bought the machine, and uh, you will get a free book of surging back here behind Alyssa. Uh, that would be a club special instead of over $8,000, you're down to $5,999. And then if you were to trade in an, an alternative eight thread serger that maybe you have, take you down to $499, and, um, which is only $91 a month if you were to finance it at 0%. Now, we have financing only good through Saturday the 27th. So short window for this special, but a great special on this mm -hmm. brand new you know, L890. And we do have multiple machines in stock ready to go, ready to serve. All right. <laughs> Benita, you give me a call later. We'll take care <laughs> of you. <laughs> All right, some other things. Um, the pattern. Uh, this is a Gail Yellen pattern that uh, certainly uh, Pam was like raving about, hey, look, we got to do this. And this was, I don't know, six, eight months ago we were talking. At least. And, um, you know, I, we also were able to talk with Gail and, um, oh boy, it's, it's pretty detailed. So mm -hmm. I, I know you're going to enjoy that uh, as part of the kit. And if you don't want to get the kit, you can get it separately there. And then the big book of surging. Uh, very detailed. I know many of you Bernina um, lovers have the embroidery. big book of feet or the big book of embroidery. Well, this is as equally detailed and uh, a great resource um, for, you know, all surging. So even if you don't have a Bernina serger, this is still great. And, and I know Pam will uh, speak to this as well. Okay. Um, then the serger threads. So you're, you'll see in the kit that you're going to need some 12 weight, likely you're going to want 12 weight, and then standard serger thread, the arrow lock. Um, we did not include thread in the kit because we wanted you to 
get to play how you wish and get color, you know, color coordinate how you want. And you may already have some thread, so um, you can you can order that as well. And then we got a, a variety of notions and <clears throat> other feet uh, as part of the club special in your in your um, flyer, but um, we won't speak to that. The one thread you may need is the iron infuse, which um, is is part of the fifteen percent off. Which Pam will talk about. Yeah, and that's. Um, so, okay. hold on. So what's in the kit, I just will quickly go over and then I'm going to let Pam take it away. You have your Essex linen that's in the kit, which you can't even see it, it looks black, but it actually has specks of colors in there. You have the t-shirt, we threw in royal green um, ribbon, which Pam will speak of. You have fuse, fusible fleece in there. And then you have the ruffling and the handles out of the grunge teal that we have here. And then the green for inside for the lining. So all of that is in the kit. The only thing you need is your thread and um, your thread. That's, thread and, your oh, and that's it, because the pattern's in. So yeah, so everything's in that kit. You just need to purchase the thread to match your kit. That's the fusible fleece. Yeah, I just so. didn't hang fusible fleece because yeah. it's not pretty to <laughs> hang. I thought that would be kind of weird—a big white puffy thing on the wall. <laughs> so, Pam. Oh, uh, one on. last thing. Scott, we got to do our drawing. Our whirly dig. I yeah. don't even know what that thing our is. Our club drawing here. Okay. Now, next month, ladies, I want more pictures of salt surgeon shoes. <laughs> this was really light today. That means you're all busy. You're all outside gardening because Buffalo has early spring weather. For a couple days. For a couple days. And then it's raining. Ann Slanders. You all right, won. Ann. Woo it'll be at Lanzo for you, Ann. Congratulations. All right. We'll um, kick it off, Pam. Or take it away, Pam. <laughs> we'll switch it over to you. Thanks, everyone. Oh. Can we hear you, Pam? Oh, we uh -oh. can't hear you. Uh oh. What happened? I'm not muted. You just heard her talking. What happened? Hold on. Oh, yeah, it's muted down there. Do you see it? Unmute Pam again. Mm -mm. I could hear her before, but I don't know why she's now. Right. Hmm. Yeah, she's not muted. Mm -hmm. Nothing. I think she left. Okay. okay. I think she yeah. left and she's going to come back. Hold on. Okay. You have to deal with us a few more minutes. Technical difficulties again. The host had everyone muted. So yeah, the whole. Yeah, you, we have everyone muted but Pam. <laughs> there she, there is. she is. Let's see. Get her back online here. Unmute. Okay, can you hear me now? Yay! Yay! Okay, very good. Okay, well, I just thought all of those samples and projects that you had uh, sent in were absolutely fabulous. You guys have been working, ladies and gentlemen, have been working very diligently uh, with your sergers and overlocks. And I just wanted to welcome you back again. And it's always great to be here with Aurora Sewing Center. I'm actually in a store right now and doing some training with other dealerships uh, throughout the country. As uh, Scott had mentioned, I am now with Bernina and very excited to head up their overlock division and work with the new L8 series machines because there are some fabulous features on these machines. So anyway, what I'm going to do, can't see me. Hmm, I wonder why. Everybody else? Can Scott and Melissa, can you see me? Yeah. Yeah. So um, if you're on a tablet, you got to swipe 
right or left, I don't know which way, kind of like Tinder. So you gotta swipe to get into the right screen. I don't know, but I, it is, I think it's, so try that, Diane. Okay, so what we're going to do today is we are going to be looking at the tote and let me see that I'm going to get the right camera here because I have two cameras going on. Nope, that's not the right one yet. Okay, so as Scott and Alyssa had mentioned, we are going to be working on the tote today. And with this tote, we are going to be doing some very interesting serger techniques, some that you may have already worked with and others that uh, work, because we're using the t-shirt, we're going to be working with, uh, a, working with your sergers in a little different way. So what I wanted to do is just kind of share with you to start off with the different techniques and areas we're going to be looking at. And I'm going to turn this all around here so I can see as I'm pointing out on the tote. So what we're going to be looking at are the puffing strips. And this is a, a pattern that Gail Yellen, as Scott mentioned, had developed. And I find that it is a great foundation for you to work with your serger and develop different serger techniques using different techniques, but making it into a project that is just really fun and a great way to be able to express your creativity. So as they mentioned, we started by working with the t-shirt. I had originally made this bag up when I started with Bernina and I used a Bernina tote bag for the center. So sometimes you'll go to different classes or programs and you have all of these tote bags that are hanging in your closet. And this is a great way to kind of repurpose those project, those tote bags as well, and kind of step it up just a little bit rather than going and carrying just a plain old tote. So this, starting in the center, we are using the t-shirt and I'm going to show you how I cut it apart and what I placed on the back side in order to give it a little bit more stability. And it's, a, it's harder to see on here but you'll see that we've done some stitching on top and we're going to start by using the chain stitch with your serger and stitching uh, in a couple of different ways. Then we're also going to be looking at the puffing strip and gathering techniques and looking at the techniques quilt that you're doing with Lori, you're already doing some of these same techniques. And I just wanted to share with you again the great ways that you can use your serger to uh, gather and several different ways that you can actually gather with your machine. We're also on the handles. We're going to, Alyssa, I think mentioned that the handles were out of the grunge fabric. So you could either use the grunge or you could use the uh, black for the handles. And I have a couple of different handle techniques that I'm going to share with you as well. And this one using the chain stitch, again, in more of a decorative way by placing that decorative thread in your chain looper, the 12 weight thread. So that kind of adds a little bit of color and kind of coordinates with the rest of your project. Then we're also going to be looking at, again, using the chain stitch for the decorative work that we've done in the past, just simply stitching on the fabric itself. But we'll talk a little bit also about blending your threads together and how that's going to work. We'll also look at using a three thread flat lock stitch along with the two thread flat lock stitch. And we'll look at the various widths that the stitch is able to be uh, adjusted to. And then in the end, we're going to put it all together and I'm going to share with you a technique on adding the lining and the to the front of the bag using fusible thread. So as we go ahead and move on through the project, 
type in your questions in the chat box there. If you have the have questions, then what we'll do is um, probably Alyssa or one of the others too, if I'm not looking at my screen, we'll be able to ask those questions as we go on. So what I'm going to do is move on over to the ironing station here and share with you a couple of ways that we worked with cutting up the t-shirt. So as Alyssa had mentioned, you can use both the front and the back of this t-shirt. And when I cut this apart, so here's just the neckline, and I cut out the front of the t-shirt itself. And when I cut the t-shirt out, I laid the ruler on so that it rested right under the neckline. And I cut straight across. And before I did that, I took my scissors and I cut up the side of the t-shirt. So now I had a front and a back that I could lay completely flat on the table and cut out. Now, here's just a quick little tip for you. With these sleeves, and I know that's a little hard to see, but what you can do is you can save this sleeve, it's already hemmed, and you could sew this, make the, make the uh, sleeve into a pocket and attach it to another t-shirt because it's already hemmed. You could do some embroidery on there if you wanted to, and then you could simply attach it to a, a t-shirt or another shirt, and you have a quick little pocket because you know we never throw anything away. So we've slit up the side of our t-shirt, then I've cut the t-shirt to the size that the front of the bag instructions tell you to. And it's about 12 inches wide by 20 inches long. Now we're gonna cut this all down a little bit later, but I am going to fuse this. And Alyssa mentioned that she has the fusible uh, fleece that's in your kit already. So simply cut the 12 by 20 size and lay that centering it on top of your t-shirt front, okay? So I'm centering that and on the t-shirt, I'm just gonna turn this over. When you look at it, you'll notice that the we'll call the top and the bottom lines, those look like stitching lines. So I'm going to position my fleece about a quarter of an inch wider or on either side. So that's kind of centering it. And if you're really uh, particular in making it exactly in the center, then of course, fold your t-shirt to the center and your batting to the center so that it's equally spaced across. All right, so what I'm going to do then is I'm using the Laura Star iron and I absolutely love that when I'm fusing on, I saw a little flicker there. Everybody still see me and hear me okay? Well, see the ironing board and hear me okay, yeah? Okay, so I'm going to use the Laura Star ironing system. And with this, it has the, suction that I'm going to be using so that it pulls the steam right through the interfacing or stabilizer and the batting. So when I put this in place, all of that steam is being pulled through the board and it gives you a very tight, secure application. Okay, now keep in mind that we're pressing this, not ironing, right? So we're pressing, lifting, pressing, lifting, because if you just push that iron across your t-shirt, you could stretch out the t-shirt, okay? So using the seam, and now I've attached that piece of fusible fleece to the backside of my t-shirt, okay? Now, while we're here at the ironing board also, I'm going to share with you the uh, a couple of different handle techniques. So one of them was where I took the bag 
took the handle, I should say, and I stitched, top stitched using the chain stitch. Another way to create this handle using an, your serger stitches, and these are chain and cover stitches. This of course is a different handle, but you could do the same technique. So here I used the wide cover stitch and the chain stitch. And the way that I did this handle was to simply take my handle and I'm wrapping a piece of fabric around the piece of uh, soft and stable, bosal, whatever uh, inner lining you're wanting to use. So I'm just taking the strip of fabric, laying it over the strip and pressing it in place. So I'm just wrapping that fabric around the strip of fabric. Okay, the strip of fabric is wrapped around that bosal. We're gonna take this over to the, to the serger in just a minute and show you how I stitch that. Now, another tool that I like to use when I'm turning my straps is the fast turn. So if you've never used the fast turn before, oops, you should see how this little setup is. It's amazing. <laughs> we all have different setups that we have to work within. So what we're going to do is take the tube of fabric that I have already stitched and I'm going to slide it onto the fast turn. Okay, now this is going to turn and stuff or fill the strap at the same time. So I'm going to take the strip of fabric and I'm folding it over the top of the tube. And there's this little pigtail that you slide into the fast turn itself and twist it into or out of the end of your tube. Then, and can you all see that little pigtail? Then I'm going to take my inner lining or that bosal or soft and stable strip and I'm gonna turn it through, turn that little pigtail through it also. And now when I start to pull and pull on that little wire, as I'm pushing, can you see how my strap, oh, I lost it inside there. I'm gonna have to push it back out because I twisted as I was pulling and it, I lost it inside there. So let me just pull this out. See, aren't you glad to see this happen to me? Everything happens at home, right? And you're like, oh, that never happens to anybody else. But it does, it happens to all of us. So again, I took the pigtail, pushed it through. And then as I start to pull, turn the stabilizer through it. And now as I push this through, don't turn on that little handle. See how it comes through? And now my tube is already turned and I have my uh, soft and stable already on the inside. So that makes it super easy to turn those handles and those little tubes come in different sizes. So now then when I take this over to stitch it, I'm just gonna press this real quick so that lays flat. Now I have my handle already stuffed and I'm ready to top stitch it, okay? So now what we're going to do is come over to the serger and I'm going to show you the L890 and some of the ways that we're going to be uh, putting this bag all together. So hold on just one second. I'm gonna stop the video so that we don't get dizzy as we I'm gonna actually share my screen and show you the machine. Okay, so does everybody see the screen on the front of the machine? 
Now, when Scott showed you the machine or introduced you to the machine earlier, you probably looked at it and thought, well, wait a minute. I thought we were working on a serger today and it looks more like a sewing machine. Well, you're absolutely right. Oops, now you are getting busy with me moving my camera. You're absolutely right because it does look like a sewing machine uh, from the screen itself. So when you look at the L890, the L890 is the new top of the line Bernina serger. And many times what we'll do is as we're going to be working on our machine or when we change from one stitch to another, it's going to be difficult for us to always make those changes. So what I'd like to do is just take a minute and introduce you to the, and I'm gonna lean in front of this camera for just a minute. Can all of you see the screen? Alyssa, do you see the shared screen? So can somebody type in and say if you can see the yeah, we can, Pam. We can you can. Simulator. Okay. Simulator. The simulator, yeah. Yes, you can see the simulator. Okay, very good. So what <laughs> I'm going to do is on the on the home page, you have the opportunity to start by going into the guided or expert mode. Now, when we're working with these different modes, sometimes when you're moving from one stitch to another, you're not exactly sure how to make that change. So what I'd like to do is show you through the guided mode, if I'm going to be moving from a chain stitch over to a cover stitch, it will lead me through step by step on how to make the adjustment. So what I do is I like to call this the GPS of sewing because it's actually going to take you from the stitch that you were on to the stitch that you want to go to. So as it takes us through this step by step, it tells you exactly what you need to do in order to change from the stitch you were on to the stitch that you're going to. It shows you and has videos so that if you're not exactly sure how to change your needle or where to change the needle, it will actually show you that through a video right there on the screen itself. So then once you have that adjustment made, you continue to move forward through the machine and it will take you all the way through to the point of threading your machines as well. So when you're ready to thread, you, if again, you're not sure how to do that, you touch on the video camera and it shows you exactly how to thread your machine. So that's just one great feature that the L890 has. And by using that screen, the screen itself is not only an advisory screen. What it actually does is it sets the stitch for you. So when you select a stitch and you touch that little green check mark, it automatically sets the machine for that stitch automatically. For the length of the stitch, the differential feed setting, and it also gives you all of the tension settings. It also has a needle up and a needle down. So when you're stitching, sometimes you want the needle to stop in the down position to hold your fabric, to support the fabric when you're having to let go of the fabric itself or reposition your hands, the needle can be set in the down position or it can be set in the up position depending upon what you're doing and how you feel most comfortable. Now, another feature that it's going to have is a saving function. So if you at any point change the stitch itself, use a decorative thread and change your speed, you can then set that stitch and you can label it however you want to label it. So if it's a 12 weight thread that you're working with or you're uh, using it for a specific project, you could label it for that setting. Up to 40 characters 
and you can save a hundred different stitches in the memory of the machine itself. So that makes it super easy. Now then, you also have, and I'm just going to touch on this real quick, and then we're going to go over to the machine. Sometimes you know the fabric that you have, and you know the end result, but you don't know exactly what stitch you want to use. So what you can do is use the creative consultant, and here it's going to give you different fabrics as well as different stitches to use. And if you're not sure what those stitches or fabrics are, you just touch the question mark. And when you touch the category, it would give you a listing of all of those fabrics within that category. So I find my fabric that I want. I also then find the technique that I'm wanting to stitch. So let's say gathering. I can then touch the gathering function. It tells me the thread and the foot to use, the stitch. And when I click on the check mark, it then already sets the machine to that stitch. So that when I'm ready to sew, let me come out of that expert, go into expert mode then it automatically has set my stitch length, my differential feed, and the settings on the machine. So now all I've had to do is lay my fabric down and stitch it, and it's already adjusted for that gathering stitch. So it takes a lot of the guesswork or the questions that we have had in the past out of using the machine itself. So we're gonna come back to this in a little bit. But what I'd like to do is spend a little time now on the machine itself. And let me go to stop sharing. Stop sharing. Okay, so now we're here at the machine. Everybody sees the machine okay? And what I'm going to do is turn off the light for just a minute because when the, with the camera, it's going to uh, shine so brightly in that area, you can't see what I'm stitching. So I'm going to turn the light off and you see how nice and bright that light is. And as I come in on the machine, I already have it set for a chain stitch. So we're going to start with the chain stitch and let me just exit out of there. And again, here we have the guided mode and the expert mode that we can work in. I'm on the expert mode. So now when I have my chain stitch selected, it's going to go directly to the stitch without having to walk through step by step. Now, as we stitch on the front of our t-shirt, what I would have done is pre-marked the lines on the t-shirt for the spacing that we're going to be stitching in. And you know that when you stitch with the right side of your fabrics facing up, you are going to be getting the, the, what looks like a straight stitch, right? So here we have our chain stitch. And on the other side, you have just a straight stitch that you're going to be seeing. So for the front of the bag, we are actually going to be stitching just from the right side of your fabric on the t-shirt. And this again is why we have that batting or that stabilizer on the back side of it so that it doesn't again stretch out the t-shirt. On the top of the machine, there is also the pressure adjustment. So here, when I'm stitching on the t-shirt, I'm going to reduce my pressure on the pressure on the presser foot so it doesn't push the fabric faster on the top side. And it doesn't add that add, doesn't have that added pressure that you would have uh, on the normal setting. Now you do have the knee lift or freehand system that you can use to raise and lower your presser foot. And especially when you're doing this cross hatch stitching, it's going to give you that opportunity to stitch and control your fabric with both hands. 
So we're just going to stitch on those lines. Again, you can chain off. And I would stitch all of the lines on that t-shirt, both in, in both directions to create that cross hatch look. And I'll show you on this bag because it's a little bit easier to see and just stitched completely across the front of that bag so that it gives you that quilted effect. Now, I'm going to go ahead and change the thread in the machine still using the chain stitch. And when you look inside of the 890, you'll notice that you have all of your tools are going to be right here on board of, on the front door. And I'm going to cut my thread right at the threading port. And because we have one path threading, the thread will always stay in the same path no matter what stitch you're going to be working. So anytime you're working with the, let me move this up so you can see that. On the front of the machine, you'll have your left needle, right needle, upper looper, lower looper, and chain looper settings, positions. When I'm working with my chain needles or my overlock needles, the threads will rest in those same positions. So I'm not having to move them to a different spot. They're always going to stay in that same position. So now when I add the decorative thread, and here's where you could use that 12 weight decorative thread on in your looper. And when I work with the decorative thread, you'll notice that on the back side, and I'm just gonna lift this up, on the back side of the machine, the thread spindles are exactly the same size from the top to the bottom. And there's a full padded cushion that the threads are going to rest on. So that again, prevents the threads from vibrating and dripping off uh, of the spools themselves. Now, if you don't have the spool pins that are the same size, make sure you use that little uh, gray disc that holds the thread in place. But as I have the thread, the, the camera up here, I also want to show you this decorative spool pin. So this decorative spool pin will also fasten right on the side of the machine. Let me see if I can stretch this far enough. Can you see that? So the decorative spool pin rests right on the side of the machine. So when you're working with your spaghetti threads or threads that are low on the spool or a standard spool of thread, you can slide the thread on that spool pin and it will just come off, uh, it'll roll off uh, as it's intended and it will prevent the thread from kinking back on itself. So that decorative spool pin comes in very handy and you can also use your thread directors if you don't have uh, that decorative spool pin. So as I thread the machine with the decorative thread, I'm just going to snap the thread into that snapping thread guide on the top. And let me bring this thread straight down. We're coming straight down through the threading guide. Now when I thread, I because my needle stopped, in the highest position, my th threading uh, lever is already in position. So I don't have to turn the hand wheel. I simply take this lever, turn it over, and the tubes have already engaged. Now then, I'm simply going to press on the foot pedal, okay? And you hear that little hum? That's our motor for pulling the thread through. So when I step on the foot pedal, and just simply hover the thread over the thread port, it just pulls it right through. Don't have to stuff it down inside of that threading port and it just picks it up. And look, my chain looper thread is right here on the inside of the machine where all of my other threads are so that I don't have to fish it outside of that little uh, bucket that's there on the side. 
Okay, so now that I have this all threaded and I have my needle threaded, I'm just going to disengage my threading tubes. Oh, and did you notice that there's this little uh, needle port or needle uh, pad that the needles will set in? Because if you are stitching with only one needle, you're not always sure where to put the thread. And of course, we don't want to put it in the cone of thread. So now I'm just going to close this all up and it's ready to stitch. So I'm going to take the handle that I turned for you earlier and I'm just going to rest this underneath my presser foot and I'm going to have the wrong side of the strap facing up. So now when I lower, when I lower the presser foot and stitch, I'm just running the strap right along the edge and my stitch length is already set at a little bit longer setting. I'm just gonna stitch for a little bit so you can see that. And then I'll use my knee lift and just pull this out. Let's see how pretty that stitch is going to be. And again, just changing the thread to a decorative thread. Now, if I'm going to, and let me see, you know me, I've got stuff stashed everywhere here. I'm going to take that strap that I had fused. This is that little wider strap. And I'm simply going to run the chain stitch down each side. Okay, so I have one side that I've stitched and I'm just going to stitch again on the other side because then I'm going to add for my cover stitch. You notice how quiet it is too? It's a really very quiet running machine. And when I add my other needle for the cover stitch, I'm just going to simply add the, add the needle to the other side and I'm going to go to a wide cover stitch. So I'm moving, actually I'm gonna move the needle that's already in and already threaded over. And I'm going to take the other needle and slide it in on the far right hand side. So now I have a wide cover stitch. Now the other cool thing, and I for, always forget to do this, look, I can tip my foot out of the way. And now when I put the needle in, it makes it easier to access, and I'm sitting side saddle here. It makes it easier to slide that needle in and see where the needle is, is needing to go. And then I'm just going to tighten up that screw. So now I have a wide cover stitch. And remember earlier, I mentioned that the needle threads are always going to stay in the same path. So now I'm simply going to add the needle for the right hand side and snap it into that snapping thread guide. thread the needle. And all I have to do then is touch my stitch and the stitch is ready to go. And it's already made all of the changes for me. So here on the screen, I simply make the selection of the stitch and I'm doing a wide cover stitch, number 22. I just simply touch that, touch the check mark, the machine set. That's all I have to do. It's already set my length. It's already set the differential feed and it has already set any changes that would need to be made to the stitch itself. So now when I stitch through the middle, 
And I'm going to lean in front of this and show you what I'm showing you. See that cover stitch running right through the middle. Now I'm going to simply take the cover stitch and I'm going to be stitching to hold that piece of fabric where it overlapped. I'm going to just stitch right through the middle of that and that's going to hold it in place. Now, of course at home, you would probably draw a line. You would want to make sure that it was all going to be nice and straight. But see on here how, how easy that was. And I just simply took the fabric and instead of having to turn the tube or turn the, the strap, you could fold the fabric over and you could do this decorative stitching on your strap, okay? So for the front of our bag, we use the chain stitch, but using the right side of your fabric facing up, which is going to give you that same look that you would have for a, a straight stitch on your sewing machine. Now, let's talk a little bit about gathering. So now when we gather, we're going to be able to use a narrow cover stitch or a chain stitch, which would give us the same type of uh, a look or an application. But again, here, all I need to do is on the screen, simply touch the narrow cover stitch, narrow cover stitch, touch the check mark, and all I'm going to do then is move my needle from the left position back to the center position. And I'm going to now on my screen, take the differential feed and the stitch length, and I'm going to increase them to the maximum amount. Okay, so now that I've increased that to the maximum amount, I'm going to take my strip of fabric And I had a strip of fabric here. Well, let me just cut another one real quick. Hold on, I'm running this cutting board. I'll be right there. Best laid plans. I'm coming back. Here I am. Okay, so now when we change to the narrow cover stitch, again, we're just going to be using that C13 foot. And the C13 foot, the chain and cover stitch foot comes with your machine. So now as you stitch, again, remember, you're tickling your fabric as you stitch. So just kind of tickle the fabric, which pulls up those gathers. And you have a stitch length of four and a half and your differential feed is at two. Right. So then stitch the other side to create the puffing for that strip on your bag. Now I like to use this stitch, the narrow cover stitch or the chain stitch when I create the puffing because it's a fixed stitch. And we've talked about that before when I've been there at Aurora Sewing. The fixed stitch is going to hold your fabric strip in place. You can't adjust this, it's set. And this is a great way to gather up your fabric, especially when you're going to be inserting it into another piece of fabric, it's going to hold it in place so that it, it doesn't shift or pull out of shape.
Sorry, everybody. Are we unmuted? Yeah, we're unmuted. But Sorry. She probably doesn't even know that she popped off. Oh, I'm coming, I'm coming. I don't know why it shuts down. Okay. There we go. Oh, it's well, we went off. It's yeah. automatically kicked off. Right. Okay, so we lost Pam for a minute. Let's see. Get her back online here in a minute. You might have to give her a... Oh, yeah. she silenced her phone. Oh, ah, we're going to go crazy here. Yeah, sorry, everybody. That is part of technology. She was getting a little glitchy. I was laughing every time she said stitch, it kept glitching out of the st part. <laughs> Itch. And I was like, what'd she say? Oh, she's here. She's here. Unmute me. Oh. But I don't see. <clears throat> there she is. Now have. Yes, I'm here. I'm here. I'm here. I'm here. Okay. And I did see that. Um, I did see that the the signal went out, so I stopped talking, <laughs> which was great. All right, so here we were looking at the the puffing strip and how what the importance was of using that uh, narrow cover stitch when you're working with the uh, puffing strip, because then again, it's a fixed setting and you're not having to worry about your stitch uh, or your lines on your puffing kind of skewing when you stitch it back into position. Okay. All right. So anybody have questions on that part of it? You love how easy it is to switch from one stitch to the next? I do. I love that part of it. Then also using that decorative thread uh, spool pin would also be a good advantage uh, when you're working on the machine with decorative thread. Somebody asked what thread I was working with. I'm working with the 12 weight uh, spaghetti, uh, the Wonderfill spaghetti thread. And you notice how easy it was to send that thread all the way through the machine when we use the one step air threading. Now, the other thing that I wanted to share with you is that when you're going to be working on the machines, sometimes or many times you want or need precision in your stitching. And with surging, we always talk about how fast it sews and we don't typically talk about precision with surging. But when you're working with the Bernina foot control and I'm bringing this down so you can see this. When I step on the back of the heel of the presser foot, my needle will simply move and I'm just gonna select my overlock stitch real quick my needle is going to move in a half step position. So it will go up and it will go down just by tapping on the back of the foot control, just like you have on your Bernina sewing machines, which if you're doing any kind of heirloom work or you're wanting to stitch, maybe you're doing a inside corner, this way you can make sure that you're stopping right at the proper point, or if you're going around curves, you can go stitch by stitch and pivot your fabric and end up with a nice circle rather than a stop sign shape or having those edges kind of skewing out on the other side. So what we're going to do now is move over and we're going to be looking at the flat lock stitching. Now, when I work with the flat lock stitching, a two thread flat lock, the Thing that I like about the feature on, on the machine is that I can stitch up to nine millimeters wide. So this is a nine millimeter wide decorative stitch. This is with a three thread stitch, of course, but using that eight weight Wonderfill dazzle and razzle threads. So nine millimeters, not only for three thread overlocks, but also for two thread and 
it's a little easier to see on this bag too, but the, mm, maybe, can you see down here where the line is stitched and I have, I've run ribbon through the two thread flat lock in a checkerboard way, look so that it, and it's an eighth of inch ribbon and I ran it one way over under and then the opposite way in the opposite position so that it gives me that checkerboard effect. And the nine millimeter wide stitch, there we, there we go. That gives you the opportunity to use a wider ribbon. And again, you can either use the needle thread with your decorative thread, or you can use your looper thread with your decorative thread. Now, when we're going to be changing, I'm again going to just pivot my foot out of the way. I can then loosen both needles and I'm moving from the chain stitch to from a, a chain or cover stitch over to the overlock. So I'm simply just moving those needles to the back position, sliding the needle straight up. And again, I have my presser foot tipped out of the way. So I have easy access to the needle position. And I'm leaving my needles threaded because if I drop the needle then, remember we have a little safety net that will hold those needles and they won't fall down into the machine. All right, so we've had those needles moved and I am going to take my scissors and just cut the decorative thread and cut right at the needle. Now watch up here at the top of my machine. Remember I showed you earlier that we have the guided mode and we have expert mode? Through the guided mode, as I showed you on the simulator earlier, it would take me through from the stitch that I was on to the stitch I'm going to. For time's sake, I'm just going to go into the expert mode and I'm going to select the two thread overlock stitch. So I'm going to go from the overlock stitch, excuse me, from the cover stitch to a two thread overlock stitch. Let me slide down there. Two thread flat lock wide with the left needle. So I'm just going to touch number 11 and I touch the check mark. It has already made the adjustments on the machine for me. So I'm just going to remove that flat sewing table. I'm going to attach the cutting cover and inside on the machine to move that upper looper back into sewing position, just turn that lever over, step on your foot pedal, and that brings your upper looper right back into sewing position. Now, remember I said earlier, you have one path threading. So instead of having to completely unthread the top of my machine for the left needle, I'm just simply going to pull my needle thread for the right needle thread. I'm just going to leave it and pull it out in a little bit, but I can leave the top part of my machine threaded. And then all I have to do is thread down to the needle. That makes it really very easy when I'm going to move from one side of overlock and cover stitch, or overlock stitching to chain and cover stitching. All right, so I have my left needle threaded and I didn't need the right needle. So let me just take that one out for two thread stitching. The two thread lever is built in the converter. And I'm going to use that same thread that I had in my chain looper, I'm going to use in the lower looper this time. So I've turned my the tubes over to engage, set my decorative thread right at the port, oops, and it will pull it right through. There we go. 
So there it is, my lower looper thread. Now, as I stitch, I can also make an adjustment on the machine if I wanted to or needed to so that I can accommodate different types of threads as well. Now, as we mentioned earlier, we have one path threading, but we also have total stitch control. So this total stitch control gives you the opportunity to actually stitch and adjust the stitch the way you want it to look. So this gives you the opportunity, and this one I was just kind of playing with, and I took the nine millimeter wide stitch and I set the loops. So instead of meeting right along the edge, now my loops meet in the middle. So now I have a two color line of stitching that I could use as an edging, or I could also use as a, a piping in a project if I wanted to use that as a piping. So I'm just going to put the standard presser foot back on since we were using the chain stitch earlier. All right, and close it all up. I have my stitch selected and I can take my piece of fabric for the two thread stitch. Fold my fabric because again, we are working with a two thread stitch. Now, on the machine, and this I won't be able to show you because it is, unless I bring the camera straight on down, you do have your markings on the toe of the presser foot. Okay, you can hear those, but you also have an indent on the foot also. That indentation that's on the foot is actually the position of your cutting blade. So that when you're going to be guiding for a flat lock stitch, or you're going to be stitching and just wanting to skim the edge of your fabric, you can use that marking on the toe of the foot and not trim off the fabric as you stitch. So now as I stitch using that flat lock stitch, the two thread flat lock, it was super easy. I didn't have to worry about where my stitches were going to go and my loops meet right along, oops, right along the edge. And now when I wiggle that apart, I have a nice flat lock stitch that you can very easily see how I went from the cover stitch to the flat lock stitch by just making a few adjustments and the machine did most of the work for me, okay? Now, you do know that when you're working with a flat lock, and I'm just going to stitch on this purple fabric so that you can see, when you're stitching and placing right sides of your fabric together, and I'm going to shorten my stitch length a little bit for this to show you, if you're wanting the ladder stitch to show, you place right sides of your fabric together. So just as I did on the front of the bag, excuse me, on that panel, it's called the back of the bag. Okay. So now I have the fabric stitched right sides together. And when I pull it apart, I end up with the ladder stitch showing on the right side where on this fabric strip, when I placed wrong sides together, I ended up with the serpentine stitch showing on the right side. And I placed my decorative thread in the lower looper. If you place your decorative thread in your needle and you're wanting to do the ladder stitch, using a top stitching needle will also allow you to stitch with that heavier thread in the needle position. Okay, now one of the other stitches that we're going to be working with is going to be a three thread flat lock stitch on the project. Now the three thread flat lock stitch, and I'm gonna show you two different stitches here. One being the three thread flat lock and the other being a three thread narrow stitch. So when we work with a three thread flat lock 
or a three thread narrow stitch, your decorative thread will be in the upper looper position. Okay, so in the upper looper, I'm going to place the decorative thread and I want a nice cut on the end of that thread. Step on your foot pedal. Place the thread right above that threading nozzle. And it'll pull the thread right through. Okay, see how far that came out. Oh, and while I'm here, this is an extension table that comes on the machine. So when you're working with larger projects or larger pieces of fabric, that table supports the fabric also. When we get to the point of finishing your bag and you're sewing around in a cylinder, it has this nice free arm also that will give you the area to pull your fabrics, whether you're doing a chain, a cover stitch, a chain stitch on a hem or stitching around the top of your tote bag. So now I have my decorative thread in the upper looper position. Needle thread is still the standard needle thread. And I'm going to be placing regular thread in the lower looper position. And again, to do the three thread cover, excuse me, three thread overlock stitch. All I'm going to do is come onto the screen, still in overlock. I'm going to a three thread flat lock stitch. I touch it and it's good to go. Now what that allows you to do is use your, all of these different stitches on your machine a lot easier and a lot faster for the setup of the machine. So when I do a three thread, flat lock stitch that's going to be on the one of the side panels of the bag. Again, you're going to be folding your fabric. And I'm simply going to lay my fabric underneath again, folding it. And I like to, in general, I will always lessen the amount of control I have on the needle excuse me, on the upper looper thread, and I'll tighten it on the lower looper thread for this 12 weight thread. Now, when I do that, as I mentioned earlier, I can go into the memory. I can save that stitch into the memory and I can label it 12 weight. Don't look at my spelling, 12 weight, and we're going to be doing a three and we'll, I'm just going to put this will be thread. Okay, we would spell out thread. And when you check mark that also when it comes back to that stitch another time in your memory, all you have to do is touch it and it's now already and automatically saved that stitch for you. Okay, so the three thread flat lock, the loops then still meet right along the edge. And then when I wiggle this apart, my stitches lay flat, just like they do with a two thread flat lock stitch. But the three thread gives you a little more added support when you're going to be working on a fabric that's going to be a, more, a little more loosely woven. Now, if I change from a three thread flat lock stitch to a three thread narrow stitch, all I need to do is simply touch on my screen, a three thread narrow stitch, which is number eight. So I can touch the little magnifying glass, touch stitch number eight. It automatically takes me to that stitch and I can simply move my thread from the left position to the right position and then move my needle from left to right, tighten up the screw and I'm set. That's all I have to do for a narrow stitch. 
if I'm doing a narrow rolled hem, I can pull that lever back and I'll just stitch this on the purple fabric so you can see the narrow stitch. But you see how easy it is to move from one stitch to another. Okay. And there's our narrow hem. So I had like three steps that I needed to make the adjustment to go from the wide three thread flat lock to a narrow three thread rolled hem. Super easy and simple. Now the other feature that I like is that it's and also when we're working with heavier fabrics, using this heavy bolzel fabric, you have when you do the side stitching on your bag, and we're going to be stitching with a four thread overlock stitch, because we have nine millimeter wide stitching, that nine millimeter stitch also allows the cutting blade to be up higher and the upper looper to be traveling up higher also. So when you're stitching on two layers of the bozel or a uh, soft and stable and four layers of fabric, you have enough space that it's going to stitch very easily through that fabric and it has better needle penetration because we have the DC motor that we're going to be working with also. So I'm moving over to a four thread overlock stitch and I'm going to slide the left needle back into the sewing position And I'm going to place my thread in the left sewing position also. Okay, so in that left sewing position, thread the needle, and I'm going to place the fusible thread, I'm going to place the fusible thread into the lower, the lower looper position. Because when we stitch on the fabric for the top, when you're adding your, uh, your lining to your bag, I like to place, just as we've been looking at previously, when I've been with you, we used the fusible thread when you would be of putting a binding on your quilt. Now, if you place the, de the fusible thread in your lower looper once again, and I'll put regular thread in the needle. Now, when I stitch the top of my bag, it's actually going to hold the top edge, the top edge of the bag when you press the binding over or the, press the lining over that fusible thread will hold the top edge of your bag in place and then again when you top stitch it's not going to roll out or have to put a whole bunch of clips around the top edge so again fusible thread in your lower looper and that iron infused wonder wonder fill iron infused thread is what we're going to be using in your lower looper. Engage your lower looper. If the tube is not lined up, simply step on the foot pedal and it will line up those tubes for you. And it will shoot that thread through. It even shoots through a texturized polyester thread as well. Okay, regular spread in our upper looper. Okay, just let that go and send it on through. Okay. I'm going to take the, this will be my lining. The purple is going to be the lining and 
I love this little flecked fabric that we have for, for the outside of the bag. We're just going to put right sides together. And I am going to widen out the width of my stitch to that nine millimeter wide stitching for the top part of the bag. So the fusible thread is in, and I have this backwards. I want the fusible thread to be on the lining side. Lower that in place. Now I'm going to lengthen my stitch because we have the, oh, you know what I forgot to do? I do this all the time myself. So we were at a rolled hem, right? On the screen, when I started stitching, I'm like, wow, that stitch looks kind of small. Well, guess what? I forgot to change my stitch. So all I need to do is go onto the screen and touch four thread overlock, touch the check mark. And now when I stitch, my stitch is perfect. Okay. So now when I would take this and take it over to the iron, and I would press this, that fusible thread is here at the top and it's going to hold that edge of the fabric nice and tight and secure so that when I would come back and straight stitch it, it's not going to curl, the, the lining doesn't curl back out from the underside of the fabric edge. Okay, I, I love to use that technique and hold my lining in place. Now, as you stitch that, you're, you can also stitch, if you're stitching your bag together and you stitch the, if this is the front of your bag and your lining, and you have another one that's exactly the same, the back of your bag and your lining, you stitch the lining separately to the front and separately to the back, and then make sure you put regular sewing thread in your lower looper. And then when you stitch down each side, joining lining to lining, front to back on both sides, and then stitch across the bottom, leaving then an opening in the bottom of the bag, which will give you the opportunity to turn your bag much, easy, much more easily. But with that technique, it does give you that uh, decorative edge across the top, which looks like a separate binding that you've actually added in your bag. Now, also when you're stitching on those heavy fa heavier fabrics, you'll find too that the cutting blade, because our needle stops in the highest position, the cutting blade also stops in the highest position. So that when you're stitching all of these multiple layers together, and you're worried about getting your fabric scooted up and snug under the presser foot, you can't scoot any farther than the cutting blade. Okay, so with that cutting blade up, you can't go on or go beyond the point of starting to cut. And this way, when you start to stitch, it will actually give you that first cut into the fabric rather than missing that first area. Now also, while I have you here and we're looking at a seam allowance, I'm going to move this back so we don't make you all dizzy or seasick. In the accessory case that comes with your machine, you have this seam guide that you can snap onto the machine. So if you have a 5 8 inch seam allowance that you're going to be working with on your project or a half inch, you simply measure that distance from your needle and make the adjustment with the seam guide so that your seams are going to be accurate all the way from the top all the way to the bottom edge of the fabric itself or your project that you're working on. 
Okay, let me see if there's something that I forgot to show you about the bag. Now, when you have all of your bag components stitched, what I did is I stitched in sequence. So I looked at my, my project and pretty much the way that I just shared with you, I stitched my uh, cover stitching first, did all of the crosshatch stitching. Then I moved over to the overlock side of the machine and I did all of that stitching on the two thread stitch, did a three thread stitch. Then I moved to a four thread and did all of the assembly of the bag on the four threads stitch setting. That way I could insert my fusible thread, do the stitching of the top of the bag, then simply add the standard sewing thread for a four thread overlock stitch and completely finish the construction of the bag. Now, when you are working with the construction and I'm gonna turn this, let me if I can get the right camera here. Okay, so here I am, I'm back. Now, when you're going to be stitching your bag, if you are stitching a real heavy fabric and sometimes there's a little bit of gap in your needle thread, what you can do is you can actually set your um, tension on or control on your thread, needle thread, you can set that to a little higher setting. And that's going to pull that stitch tighter and you'll end up with a much tighter seam when you're going to be stitching on a heavier fabric because of the weight of that fabric. So by having total stitch control, by having that one path threading. And as you saw, the screen is just absolutely fabulous on the machine for making the adjustments from one stitch to another. It's going to allow you to use your machine even more than what you've used in the past. And I know that uh, Scott and Alyssa have a great price on the machine for you uh, during the program today and through the weekend. So take advantage of that if you're, uh, if you love the machine as much as I do, because I absolutely do. And we can certainly, we have online classes. There are uh, mastery classes that will lead you through using your machine. And even now when you're not able to come into the store, you see how easy it is. All the tutorials that are built right in on the machine that will hold your hand when Scott and Alyssa aren't there to uh, answer your phone calls in the middle of the night when a lot of us start to sew. So I hope you had a great time looking at the L890 machine, had some, uh, had some fun using the project that we were going, that we put together. And just as we said earlier, having the, the, the pattern that Gail had used certainly gives you the opportunity to experience your machine in a much greater way. Oh, I have this sitting here, I forgot to show you. Fabric folding pen, have we used that before? The fabric folding pen, when you're doing your two thread flat lock stitching, I'm gonna just tip this down. Oops, wrong camera. Modern technology, right? Okay, so let me see if I can get the right camera. Yep, here we go. Nope, that's not the right one. <laughs> so here's the fabric folding pen, so that when you're doing your two thread flat lock stitch, you can take the ruler with your fabric folding pen and just draw a line with the liquid on the fabric and you can already see that it starts to kind of fold but it allows that fabric to crease much more easily than by simply folding your fabric it gives a nice crease that you can follow along when you're going to be stitching and even if you're going to be doing any kind of stitching a seam on your fabric at your machine, you would be able to use that fabric folding pen. Drizzle it or squeeze it, run it right along the stitching line. See that liquid coming out of there? And then when you fold the fabric over, it creases that fabric even more than just folding it. 
So the fabric folding pen allows you to stay at your machine even for a longer period of time, but it does not replace your iron by any means. Okay. All right. Scott, Melissa, you're back. We are. We are. Okay. <laughs> I think we're here. Yep, you're there. Okay. <laughs> well, thank you very much, Pam. Thank you. And um, I learned a lot. I hope you all learned. Welcome. <laughs> <laughs> and I don't know. I forget who made the comment. Um, I, I probably won't say it correctly about the um, the L890. It's uh, you know drives like a Ferrari. Yeah. Say that again. Powerful as a truck. Powerful as a truck. <laughs> like a Ferrari, and, which was and, great. And you know that that really just summed it up on on how this machine operates um, and just the the intuitiveness. Because I know like going through Serger Club and it's certainly Lori's uh, program that we've done um, a few weeks back. You know, everyone seems to always just struggle. And I know Pam, you've gotten a lot of phone calls from me over the years on, <laughs> on like, okay, what stitch do I use? Or how do I set this up? Or how do I change over? And, and you, you know, sometimes they get dust on these and we put them away for a little bit. And then it's like, okay, it's surgery club. Let's get them out. Well, this screen here <laughs> is, did, I, did is, I mention it? Did I mention that here? I've said this so many times in the last few days. I don't remember. Oh my gosh, it's senior blonde brain. I'm like, oh my goodness, I'm getting. <laughs> but uh, I call that the GPS of sewing because it takes you from where you are to where you want to go. Every little turn and step along the way, it takes you from A to B without any question. So the power of the calculating truck, either Ferrari with the GPS built in. That's right. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yep. Exactly. That's great. Yeah. So, you know, I, it I, runs like runs like a Tesla on electricity. Yeah, uh, I know that you know talking to so many dealers uh, for a number of years. You know, since we've been yeah. on board here. Yeah, those four. You know, like when when are they going to roll it out? When are they going to roll it out? Well, they did it right. They didn't just puke it out. They went through multiple product development steps to fine tune this, this machine and, and the line, the eight series line for that matter, to, yeah, to do it right. And, uh, right. Nice. And, and thank you for going through many of the features today, Pam. Yes, you you're, the club. you're welcome. You're welcome. I know. And thank you for always giving us great input and, you know, for everybody out there using their sergers, you know me, I just love sergers and there isn't anything that I don't want to try or experiment with. And, you know, the big book of surging that they referenced earlier is a great resource to give you a lot of the information that sometimes we, we, we don't take our machines out by ourselves because we feel uncomfortable with making a change or doing something. And with the big book of surging, that certainly helps you. And as you can see, using the L890, there's no doubt that you're going to use the machine in and experience it more so than what you have in the past. Right. Absolutely. So um, I, I think, thank you again, Pam, but now I look forward over the next two months uh, because we have April Surger Club and then May Surger Club, which will wrap up our club season to see some of these uh, perfect totes made. Absolutely. Yes, yeah. And see some variations in ways that you've used those patterns as well and other other ways that you've applied the stitches that we've kind of talked about today and, and experiment with those different threads and uh, the different ways that those stitches can be applied. And I know, Pam, you're a, a behind the scenes member, so you'll get to see them too um, on our behind, behind the, the scenes, scenes Facebook page. Yep. So. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Good. Well, it's always a pleasure to work with all of you and see everyone again. Hopefully one of these days we can all get back together in person and share some more exciting ways that we can use our surgers. Thanks. Excellent. Thanks, Pam. Yeah, thanks again, Pam and everyone. All righty.
Have a great day. Have a wonderful okay. day. Bye. Alrighty. Thanks, everybody. Don't forget to buy your machines, ladies. <laughs>